Good morning, Magnify. Welcome to this blessed Easter Sunday. It is time to stand up and testify. Whether you're here or at home, we welcome you. I'm going to say he is risen. You're going to say he is risen indeed. Let's stand. We say he's risen indeed with everything we have. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. Hallelujah. Let's join our hearts and our voices together. We sing about the gospel through the ages. Here we go. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven.
praise him today because he is our living hope. Whatever you bring today, no matter the sorrow, there's resurrection power and life change for all of us. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name.
But as we enter into prayer today, to understand how sweet this hope is. If death has touched your life in 2020 or 2021, death of someone you love, death of a dream, death of a relationship, raise your hand. Dear Heavenly Father, you see and you know all. And we're here today as your children. And we align ourselves behind you because you and you alone bore the penalty of our sin, each and everything that we've done wrong. You took it upon yourself. You took our hell so that we could have forgiveness and freedom and resurrection power. And because of what you've done for us, we can stand and say to death, to hell with you. We stand in victory because of the shed blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Lord, but there are those that are in great lament even this week, as they have lost ones that they love. And their sorrow is difficult. Lord, I pray that you would encourage their faith, that they'd be able to see beyond and know that it's just a little while. It's just a little while. And we will all be dancing before the throne of our Father, singing, worthy is the Lamb. Lord, we look forward to those days. Help us to see that. And for those in our church family that are in physical need of healing, whether it's illness, whether it's relationship, mental, spiritual, financial, Lord, we look to you. Help us to be humble enough to come and ask for prayer, to come and ask for help. The enemy wants us to be silent and not let the church body come alongside and help. Lord, help us to extend our hand to you and receive the healing, the perseverance that you want us to have. Lord, we pray for our nation. What a mess. But we pray, not our will, but yours be done, that your kingdom come. Lord, we pray for our missionaries. All over the world, so many ministries have come forth from this place. Lord, we pray a blessing upon them on this glorious Easter day, that they would know that they are called and chosen and that they are supported and loved. Lord, we pray for our own hearts this hour that we would listen. There is a word today that can change us and help us and empower us. Let us put aside all pride and all criticism, but enter wholly and wholeheartedly into it. Receive it, take it in, and let it change us. We love you. We adore you. We're so thankful that you've reached down and saved us. All God's children said together, amen. Amen. Oh, again, Again. such a blessing to be with you today. This past week, we had the opportunity to have the Easter drama performance. We had sold-out crowds. That was a true blessing. Tonight at 7 p.m. and tomorrow at 7 p.m. You can go to our website and you can receive a registration so that you can view that tonight and tomorrow night at 7. Please, if you need to be encouraged, if there's someone else that you could sit down and watch this with and talk about faith and talk about the resurrection and talk about how Jesus Christ has changed your life, this is a wonderful opportunity. These things happen because you are so generous. Don't forget that you are partnering with us and you're helping us all the time and helping the mission of this church. So there are places, collection places out in the building that you can donate. You can donate online. You can donate with your phone. Please join us in presenting the gospel throughout the entire world. Right there on the slide. Yep, that's all the ways you can do that. Blessings on you. You may be seated. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. All of these I've kept from my youth. 
one thing you still lack. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and then you shall have treasure in heaven. And follow me. Truly, I tell you, only with difficulty can a rich person enter the kingdom of God. I say again, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Who then can be saved? Well, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. See, we... We have left everything to follow you. What then will we have? Everyone who has left houses, brothers, sisters, father or mother, children or land, will receive back a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. When you and I listen to or read the story of the rich young ruler, and his encounter with Jesus Christ, we must, when we think about him, we must think about ourselves. And it's easy to think, oh, he's rich and he has authority and I don't have those things. So this is a story that is about some extreme. No, this is a story about each and every one of us. You see, between him and Jesus, there's a gap of understanding. And this man is drawn to Jesus. There, this account is in three of the four Gospels. But the Gospel of Mark gives us a little more detail because in the Gospel of Mark, it says he was kneeling. And when Jesus listened to him, Jesus loved him. So when hypocrites came to Jesus, he spotted them right away, like the Pharisees, and he called them out. But there's something about this guy that he knows there's sincerity in him. And out of love, he is going to point out what is lacking. And so he comes and he calls him good teacher. He knows he's special. But notice he didn't call him Lord yet. And that's the gap. That's part of the gap that is here that this story is being relayed to you and me. You see, when Jesus looks at him and he hears him, he loves him, he knows this man and you and I get part of what's going on. But we always have a gap. So he gives them part of the commandments. This is what you must do to be saved. Now Jesus, in his teachings, we know nobody keeps the commandments. But this man sincerely thinks he has kept them from his youth. And Jesus zeroes in them because he loves him. He wants to bring him close. He wants to close that gap. And you and I always have things we love and things we do and things we like and things we appreciate. But deep down, there's our most precious possession. It's our will. It's our will. It's our demand that life be how we want it. It's a demand that people be how we want them. It's a demand that circumstances be how we want them. And when that is blocked, we begin to act. We act in anger. We act in retreat. We, we manipulate. We do all kinds of things. We build a whole life out of protecting our will, that demand. So we're like the rich young ruler. And Jesus sensed this instantly, but he loved him. So he's going to tell him exactly what is most precious possession. And it really isn't the money and the position. It's that those are the tools by which he is able to, to protect his will. <laughs> Jesus is, he is so good here. He goes right to it. But if Jesus, if you and I were standing here with him having this same conversation, I love these stories 
because when you read them, he's just a real man having face-to-face conversations. And when you realize that, when you're reading them, he's having that conversation with you and I. And if he were here talking to you or me, what would he call out? What would he zero in on as our most precious possession? In what ways do we protect our will to make life work? Because whatever it is, he's like, give it to me. That's all he's saying to him. This thing is weighing you down. This thing is keeping a distance between us. I so want you close to me. Give it to me. Go sell the, get rid of your money, your position, because that is where your will is, and it's keeping you from me. And so the key word in this story is the truth in this story is that Jesus loves him and he loves us. And it is out of love that he calls us to give him our most precious thing, to surrender our will to him. That's what it means to come to Jesus in the first place. But that is also the task of the Christ follower every day, repeatedly through the day, when things happen that we don't like and we're trying to make life work, it's, it, we must surrender in those moments, moment by moment, and give him our will. And he even tells in his teaching about the, the rich to get into the kingdom and how impossible it is. But if it's impossible, who can do it? And he says, ah, oh, through your own self, it's impossible. If you surrender your will to me, it's possible. That's the only way. But if we will surrender ourselves, our will to him, it's not only possible, it's certain. He will come through for us, and the first shall be last. So as we enjoy and celebrate together this morning and this day Like the rich young ruler, I just ask all of us, what is our most precious possession and have we surrendered it for the first time or do we need to surrender things anew to draw close to him? If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. For anyone who saves his life, will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Or or what shall a man give in return for his soul? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who went before you. So seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, again, we find Jesus talking to people 
And it's imperative that we realize he's talking to you and me. And we're in this crowd listening. And this is his first public speech, if you will. And it's these beatitudes, these blessings that he introduces himself in many ways to a larger audience. And these blessings he talks about are an interesting list because some of them are things that are happening to you right now. And others are things that we choose to adopt as our way of viewing life. And so right now, are you poor in spirit today? There are people here in the original crowd who were. How about you? Do you feel worn down about anything? Has your attempts to live a, a godly life been beating you down a bit? Does it seem like the idea that if I follow Jesus, he'll take care of me, does that seem a little weather beaten in your life right now? Blessed are those who mourn. Paul prayed about it earlier. Many of you are mourning right now. We come here and we love to see each other and be together and worship our God and feel the presence of the Spirit. But if you're in mourning, that comes right back instantly. It just hangs over everything. Are you in a situation where righteousness is being denied you? You've done all the right things. You've humbled yourself. You've surrendered and, and you're in a relational situation or a work situation where even though you're doing the right things as best you can with all humility, something unfair is going on in your life right now. And maybe you're being persecuted in some way. But then he calls us to adopt certain behaviors despite. So all these things in the Beatitudes here that may be upon us are often what causes this gap that the rich young ruler had. It makes us cling to our own will even more. But Jesus is saying, if you come to me, you're blessed. Blessing is coming. And he says, adopt a, a, a way of seeing people that is meek. Don't live by vengeance. Live by love and life-giving and be merciful. Give your best to the other and live with integrity. Look first at our own heart in all situations. and Live by peace. And when there's discord or distance between us and the people around us, go fix it. Go humbly and fix it. And Jesus is telling us all this, that when we come to him and we surrender, there is blessing. You may not feel it in the moment. You may not feel that morning will stick with you maybe to the end of your life. Look beyond. When you come to me, you can look beyond with confidence. But the main message of this is wherever you're at, whatever you're going through, he loves you. He loves you and he loves me. Oh, to Jesus I surrender All to him I freely give I will live and love and trust him In his presence I will live All to Jesus I surrender if you make me holy thine Let me feel your Holy Spirit 
truly know that you are mine. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender. All to you, my freely give me I will ever love and trust Him. In His presence, I will live. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender. I surrender Lord I give myself to thee fill me with your love and power let your blessings fall on me resurrection of Christ. And when we read the story in the Bible, after he was resurrected, Jesus appeared to his disciples and he talked with them. He cooked food for them. He helped them with their fishing. He had things to say. And with one of his closest disciples, Peter, he had this very important conversation. Though these other men, they may fall away, I am loyal to you. No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Do you? You love me. Lord, you know everything. You know how much I love you. Feed my sheep. Well, this conversation is uh, brief, but very powerful. And here's why. To understand what Jesus is getting across and why He's repeating himself. If you've been here or live streaming with us for our series in the Old Testament, when we talked about the story of Elijah, Elijah reaches a point of despair and God meets him and he asks him a question and Elijah answers it. And then God will ask him the same question And Elijah answers it the same way the second time. And the next week, we looked at the prophet Jonah. And God asked him a question. Do you do well to be angry about this? And Jonah answers the question. But then God, again, in just a little bit, he asks him the same question. Do you do well to be angry about this? And Jonah answers the same way. And I said at the time, and I'll repeat to us today, when when God asks us the same question twice, we better pay attention. And we better really think about the answer, or at least our heart. So as I studied that, I thought, Where else does God do this? And I only came up with one spot, and it's here. But this time, he asked the same question three times. Why? Because this is too important for Peter and you and I to miss. And remember, it's three times, and Peter denied Christ three times So the three probably stings, but it's a good sting. 
but the asking you and I, do we love him? Like the rich young ruler, like you and me, he wants us to understand and close the gap of what we think it means to be a Christ follower and what it really means. It means to surrender everything. But in this discussion, he wants Peter to know this isn't about me and you now. I know you love me, but if you love me, you will feed my sheep. What is he saying here? You have a job to do. Peter, you can be as emphatic to me in person about your love for me as you want. You can insist on it. You can show great emotion. You can hug me. You can sing your lungs out. But if you love me, you will love people. And just so you know that, I'm going to say it three times. And this is for you and me. Because this is the great mess of Christianity, of the Christ-centered life. We are very comfortable allowing relational discord to allow petty differences to coexist with our love for Christ. And Jesus right here is saying, no. (laughs) Do you love me? I'm going to ask you three times because I need you all to get this. If we love him, we will love each other. There will be unity, and when there's disharmony in the spirit of biblical peace, we will go and restore that. There's no other way to know him and to love him is to love the world and love people. And so today, throughout the day and into the week, as we celebrate the risen Christ, And what that means for us in eternal life when we come to him in faith. Remember, if we really want to celebrate him, we will also celebrate the people around us. And if we're really surrendered to him, even though we're hurt and wounded, most of us are going to experience some sort of disappointment from another person today. You probably already have, but there's more coming How do I know that? Because that's what our lives are, because we're sinful. But today, to really celebrate the Christ is to go from here and to celebrate people in his name and to long for us all to abandon our will to him so we can love each other the way he loves us. Shuffling soldiers' feet as they guarded the grave. One day, two days, three days had passed. Could it be that Jesus had breathed his last? Could it be that his father had forsaken him? Turned his back on his son, despising our sin. All hell seemed to whisper, just forget him, he's dead. Then the father looked down to his son and said,
shake Like lightning from heaven The stone was rolled away And the gods as dead men They just stood there in fright As the power of love Displayed its might Suddenly a melody Filled the air Riding wings of wind It was everywhere The words all created
sing some more hallelujahs with everything that we have. Here we go. I raise a hallelujah right here, right now in the presence of my enemies. So good. I raise a hallelujah opportunity for us to collectively testify as the children of the king what his resurrection means to us. So you can put your hands together, you can smile to the person next to you, let them know that it's okay, they can sing 
their hearts out. Because our oh, Jesus, he's risen. Let the children sing. Come on, y'all. Appreciate the leadership there. Hey, you got to help me do something. Uh, the most uh, common expression or question I get when we do our drama is I'll meet people who have never seen it before, and they'll say, hey, where do you get all these people to do this? And I'm like, because I'm amazed too. I'm like, they're from our church. And I said, not only that, uh, not only that, um, <laughs> I tell them, for every one you see on stage, there's at least one more who you'll never see. They're, they're doing tech. They're making food, watching kids. So thank them. <laughs> Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. And the reality of what we've received from you cannot 
fill our head. It will overflow. We only know a small glimpse of it. Thank you for that glimpse. We look forward to the day when we see it in full. But now I just ask that your spirit fill us and we would surrender whatever blocks us from you. And if we're going through hardship, we got difficult relationships, we got mourning, we've got sickness, we've got all these things that weigh us down. And we want to forget you or we feel forgotten or we want to continue on in, in resenting people or thinking others are wrong and I'm better. Whatever our situation, whatever is blocking us from really living out the truth of the resurrection, may we reach over those things and grab hold of your son. And may that truth pull us through life day by day, moment by moment in a life-giving way. May we feed your sheep because we have been fed so perfectly by you. Go with us now, bless our time, and may, may we live lives that tell the world that our king is alive and help us to see the possibility of redemption in everyone around us because it was possible for us. It's possible for everyone. And may we live in a way that invites them to that. And I pray these things in the name of your son, the risen Christ, the Lord Jesus. Amen.